Hello and welcome to another AIC Productions video. Today we're going to be talking about CPUs. I know I have a couple laptops in front of me here, but we're going to be talking about the CPUs inside of them. On this channel, I've always been on the lookout for the best budget CPU uh, on the market at any given time. In fact, I go on Amazon and eBay and uh, Newegg and a bunch of other sites all the time just seeing what systems are out there and what processors are available to you. And recently I reviewed the Celeron N4000. In fact, it's been on the market for over a year. I think I've actually had this laptop for over a year at this point, as well as its, its counterpart, the uh, Asus that I have. And it's been a pretty good processor. It, it Obviously, it's a Celeron. It's slow. You're not going to expect amazing performance for $150 for a brand new computer. But it's been very good, especially compared to its previous counterparts, specifically the N3350 and the N30, or excuse me, 3050. So when I reviewed this laptop, my only real gripe with it is that it wasn't a four core processor. In this day and age, so many software programs can actually take advantage of more than just two cores, and so it would make a huge performance boost on this system. When I reviewed the N3350, there was a 4-core variant in the N3450, and it definitely provided a big boost in performance, both in CPU and in graphics performance, and just overall general use of the machine. And it really wasn't that much more expensive than the standard 3350 price, about a $50 price increase over the standard machine. However, with the N4000, there is a four core variant. It's just, I don't know if it's worth it. And we'll go into that here in just a little bit. First thing we'll look at is the pass mark scores here that we ran through. We're not going to look at the memory or the storage just yet. Specifically, we're going to look at the CPU score as well as the 2D and 3D graphics. On the and 4100 you'll see that our score is almost 1100 points more than that on the N4000 making it not quite twice as fast. And that is definitely a big improvement in a synthetic benchmark. You'll also see that the 3D scores are nearly identical. In fact on the N4100 they're slightly less within a margin of error on these machines. But what that tells you definitely is that you would not want to go out and buy this machine or this machine with this processor over this machine with this processor if you're looking sp specifically for an improvement in gaming performance. But that nearly double speed in CPU performance, does that translate to real world performance? It definitely did with the N3450, but it does not seem to do that for this particular product lineup. For whatever reason, that double score, it didn't seem to cause the laptop to open web pages faster. It didn't seem to cause the laptop to be able to full screen or exit from full screen on like YouTube videos any faster. It uh, didn't allow me to load any more additional web pages between the two. They are fairly similar in spec. Otherwise, they have the same amount of RAM at 4 gigabytes, and they both have 64 gigs of on by onboard storage. Unfortunately, the storage that Dell decided to put on this machine is painfully slow. It is nearly half the speed of this machine. And I definitely think that that makes a big difference in the speeds that we're getting out of this processor. Unfortunately, I don't have any... This does have storage that I think can be upgraded, possibly, maybe. Not 100% sure. None of the, the M.2 drives I have I've worked in this. I've ordered one, but being that we're in COVID, I have no idea when that will actually arrive. But as far as real world, real world performance on this machine, I'm just not seeing it, unlike previously. And that really disappoints me. I was really hoping better for this machine. Biggest reason being, when I bought this machine a year ago, it was $150 brand new at Best Buy or on Amazon. This machine, used on eBay, I paid over $200 for and got and 
that was a good deal. They often go for closer to three to four hundred dollars brand new. And that's fairly typical for machines with this processor. There just isn't a very big variety of these machines. And the ones that are out there, they're expensive. And so for $150 for a brand new machine, that's a pretty easy sell. You can buy used machines for that price, but you're not going to get the battery life or the convenience or some of the modern features that you're getting with this machine. And it's only $150. Most people, that's not a lot of money, and you can justify spending that small amount of money on something like this. That's going to last you a year or two before you replace it with the newer model. Whereas when you're spending close to $400 on a laptop, first of all, that pushes you out of Celeron processor territory. You're getting up into the Pentiums and the Core i3s and the Ryzen 3s. And even if you're really lucky and you get a really good deal, close out sale, whatever, on a previous gen brand new model, even up into some of the Core i5 systems. Not a lot, but they do exist in that price point sometimes, again with rebates or whatever. And so that becomes a lot harder to suggest a system. Then you look at the used market. I spent just over $200 on this system with a 5th gen Core i7 and dedicated video graphics. I mean, this is a steal compared to this. And so if you're looking to spend that much money unfortunately for $150 buying something even used there just isn't a lot of options out there and you really have to search for something in nice condition if you're buying used so buying something new at that price point is pretty easy to recommend you just have too many other options in this price point I really blame Intel's lack of innovation over the last few years on this these CPUs just are not that big of a performance difference versus the previous generations and you can really feel that I really do feel like that is definitely noticeable in these systems and I really hope that the pressure that the desktop and higher end CPUs from Intel the pressure that they're getting from AMD really trickles down into these budget systems I would really like to see these either all come with two cores and hyper threading or with four physical cores and see them start coming with at least 6 gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage in that sub $200 price point. I don't know if we'll ever get to there, but I definitely think that it is possible to get there on these systems. So basically if you're looking for a budget system and you have less than $200 to spend, definitely would recommend something like this, either this Lenovo or this, the Asus that I've featured in other videos, the E203MA uh, with the 64 gigs of storage. Uh, I simply couldn't recommend this system at any price point. And definitely look on that used market. I'm going to be reviewing more of this laptop and some other used laptops here on my channel in the coming weeks. And so definitely some great options out there for you if you're looking to get in at budgets. Right now, again, this video is being made during the COVID-19 stay-at-home orders. Uh, the price of computers has skyrocketed really um, even budget systems are going for very high numbers um, price wise just because so many kids all of a sudden are having to do homework from school things like that so the prices I quote now may or may not be uh, actual I just what I paid for systems that's really all I can go off of so anyways thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing day